Hi folks, welcome back to 10.4 Plane Curves and Parametric Equations. This is the third video in this lecture series and we're going to take a look at question number seven here. So question number seven says that you're given two, a set of parametric equations, okay? So you've got your x of t, which is square root of 2t plus 4, and you've got your y of t, which is 2t plus 1. And we're starting at negative 2, and we're going to 6. And so step 1 here, because again, we're not just practicing plugging in points, but we're practicing doing this algebraically, is we want to eliminate the parameters using substitution. So I'm again looking at what's the same in both equations, and I notice that there's a 2t here and a 2t here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to start with the green equation. I'm going to try and get the 2t by itself, and then I'm going to take whatever I get and plug that in for the 2t in the pink equation. So let's try that. I've got x equals the square root of 2t plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. So I get x squared equals 2t plus 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 4. So x squared, e oh, x squared minus 4 equals 2t. Now what that means is I can take this x squared minus 4 and plug that in here for that 2t. So let's go ahead and do that. Instead of saying y equals 2t plus 1, I can say that y equals x squared minus 4 plus 1. And then I can simplify that to say y equals x squared minus 3. Okay? So the shape that I'm looking at is a parabola. Right? I know that because it's x squared. And it's shifted down 3 because that minus 3 means I'm moving the whole parabola down 3. All right, so to plot our points, let's kind of use these bounds as starting and ending point, okay? So negative 2. When I plug negative 2 into my green one and to my pink one, okay, then what am I getting? Well, negative 2 in the x1 will give me a 0. And negative 2 in the pink one will give me a negative 3. And that means that our starting point is going to be 0, comma, negative 3, or the vertex. And then, hopefully, if I know my x squared minus 3 curve, I can go from there and I can plot sort of like, one, what is 1 squared minus 3, what is 2 squared minus 3, etc. Okay? So if I take 1, 1 squared minus 3 gives me negative 2. Okay? If I take 2 and I plug it in, 2 squared minus 3 gives me 1. And if I take 3 and I plug it in, 3 squared minus 3 gives me 6. And if I take 4 and plug it in, 4 squared is 16 minus 3 is 13. So that will get me all the way up here. And so I have a parabola, but because I'm only starting at negative 2 and ending at 6, I end up with only half of the parabola. So I'm going to connect my points in that direction. And I'm going to go ahead and include some arrowheads so it's clear what direction I'm going in, okay? And so in this way, I can eliminate parameters and use that to help me sketch the graph that I'm interested in. All right, so let's move on to some practice problems where we're just practicing eliminating the parameter and then writing our final equation as a rectangular equation. Okay, so in other words, we're going to get rid of all the t's in the equation. All right, so let's get started with number 8. Okay, number 8, I have an x and a y. So I've got my x equals e to the negative t, and I've got my y is 3e to the t. 
And I notice that there's an e to the t here, so I'm going to take this green equation, x equals e to the negative t, and I'm going to rewrite it as x equals 1 over e to the t. So using my um, rules of exponents to help me rewrite it. This is going to allow me to isolate my e of t as 1 over x. And now I can take this 1 over x and plug it into the y equation. So y equals 3e to the t, or y equals 3 times 1 over x. And again, that's just because I can put a 1 over x everywhere I see that e to the t. Now this is pretty easy to simplify, so we can write this as y equals 3 over x. And there is our rectangular equation after we eliminated the parameter. All right, let's take a look at example 9. So when I look at example 9, I see that I have y x equals 3t minus 2, and I have y equals t plus 1. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take the second equation, okay, and I'm going to isolate the t. Because once I isolate the t, I can put that into the t of the x equation. So you don't always have to start with the green one. Sometimes you can start with the pink one as well. So y equals t plus 1, but another way to write that is t equals y minus 1. And so instead of x equals 3t minus 2, I'm going to write it as x equals 3y minus 1 minus 2. Okay, so again, y minus 1 can go everywhere that there's a t. All right, let's distribute this. And we get x equals 3y minus 3 minus 2 or x equals 3y minus 5. Now there's nothing wrong with that equation. This would be a perfectly acceptable rectangular equation. But if you wanted to, you could also solve for y instead if that helps you visualize it better. Okay, so this is one possible answer. Or I can say x plus 5 equals 3y, and then y equals x over 3 plus 5 over 3. And this might be a little bit more clear that it's a line, and so I can go ahead and imagine that I'm going to have a line with a y-intercept of 5 thirds and a slope of 1 third. All right, let's take a look at these two equations. Number 10. So for number 10, I've got my x of t equals the square root of x plus of t plus 2. And I've got my y of t equals the log of t. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the green equation and I'm going to get t by itself. And then I'm going to plug whatever I get into the pink equation. All right, so x equals square root of t plus 2. Or x minus 2 equals square root of t or t equals x minus 2 squared. And so everywhere I see a t, I can replace it with x minus 2 squared. And so when I do that, I'm going to get y equals log of x minus 2 squared. Okay, that's one possible option as an answer. Or, to kind of start to review for that final, or think about some skills that are useful, I want to remember that when I have a log to a power, I can actually bring that down to the front. And so I could say y equals 2 log x minus 2. Okay? All right, let's do one last uh, example here. So, I've got x of t equals for sine t, and 
I've got y of t equals 3 cosine t. And I only want to go one time around that unit circle. Okay? So this should look familiar. It should look a lot like question number four and five where I made you fill out the whole table. And so let's think about the strategy that was helpful for us there. We knew that we could call upon our handy dandy friend sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, okay? So let's think about this green equation. How can I get sine t by itself? Well, I'm going to divide the 4 to both sides. So instead of sine squared t, I can write x over 4 squared. Plus, instead of cosine t, I can write y over 3 squared. And that's going to equal 1. Now, one thing you might notice that's different is in example 4 and 5, the numbers on the bottom were the same. But now I have a 4 on the bottom here and a 3 on the bottom here. Those are not the same. So let's expand this. x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. And this we want to be able to recognize is our good old friend an ellipse. And if you were to think about what that looks like, Okay, based off of section 10.2, you would know that there's vertices at 4, negative 4, and then covertices at 3 and negative 3, and so we'd have sort of an Ernie-looking ellipse here. Okay? Now, when you get to Calc 2, this is going to be really helpful to be able to sketch back and forth between these two, okay? So we're really setting a foundation here, and you can see that everything we've learned in this chapter has been really important to help us be able to sketch some of these diagrams so far. All right, we're going to come we're going to stop here for the third video. We're going to come back for a very short fourth video where we just talk about some patterns that we see. Um, I think that this table of patterns might be something that you choose to take with you to Calc 2, and hopefully that helps clarify sort of like how do we know what shapes things are going to be, okay? So I'll see you back here for video number four.